all be the glory for what he has already done. God, our Father, how we are so grateful and thankful for another opportunity, another chance to stand before your people and declare your word between both living and dead. Lord, I pray now that what you and I discussed this last week in moments of seclusion and privacy, I ask now that you will allow it to be manifested in the light of the day. People give your, God give your people receptive hearing and a mind that's willing to do what your word shows us in black and white that you command and you require of us to do. Lord, I love you and I appreciate you and all that you've done. Without you, there will be no me. And I want you to use me this morning for your glorification. I will not rob you of your glory, but if you use me, I give it all back to thee. It's in the name of him who died so that I may live freely without master. In Jesus' holy and righteous name, amen. Amen. To all of you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, it is just good to be here Thank once you, again. Amen. 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 Ursha, you may be seated. Those of you who have your paper Bible or your electronic Bibles, um, walk with me to Philippians chapter number four. Philippians right. chapter number four. And I want to eavesdrop Come on. on verse 6 and verse number 7. Mm. Verses 6 and 7 of Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading from the New International Version of God's Word. Amen. Are we all there? Amen. It says, do not be anxious about anything. All right. Mm-hmm. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, mm. with, re- with thanksgiving, present your request to God. All right. And when you present it to God, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. All right would guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I want to talk about for just a moment or two the answer to anxiety. The answer to anxiety. Uh, Just in case you are unfamiliar with anxiety, it's that thing that keeps you up at night, stressed or worried about Paul gives you and I a command from the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. Don't be anxious about anything. Oh, Lord. So uh, I got a couple of things to tell you, then I'll be through. First of all, there must be the mastery of life of prayer. You must have a life of prayer right. if you want to live a stress-free life. Amen. You gotta. Talk to God on a continual basis. He says, be anxious for nothing. Don't be over anxious. Don't be stressed out about anything. I like the words that he used. He didn't say stress about some things, but he says stress about absolutely nothing. Paul says the reason that I don't need you to stress is because if you have a real relationship to God, remember I told you to cast, Peter told you, cast all of your cares upon God. And the reason being is because God, he cares for you. Not only that, but God 
can do more with your issues than you can ever think or dream or imagine about. So why are you up all night stressed out about something that you can't add a cubit to, that you can't change it anyway? And since God is the only one who can change it, why not go to sleep at night and let God handle what you cannot handle? Number one, he said, if you're going to live this stress-free life, you got to have this relationship to God. He said, in everything by prayer and supplication through Christ Jesus, no one can really pray unless he knows the way. You cannot even attempt to come to God unless he leads you to him by his son, Jesus Christ, because the word of God said that the Lord has declared that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. No one comes to the Father except Christ has drawn him to the Father. And if you come any other manner, you do know you come as a thief and a robber. And if you come as a thief or a robber, you'll never get in because the only way we can get to the Father we must go by the Son Jesus Christ first. Are y'all with me today? So he also said Paul remembers uh, re reminds you and I that there is one there is only one God and one mediator between God and man and that mediator is none other than Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. This new birth into the family of God, it comes through faith in Christ. You gotta have faith in Christ. If you want to live a stress-free, worry life. You gotta live it in Christ. You gotta have this ultimate relationship with him. Now, here's the thing. Just because you are connected to him don't mean that you're not gonna stress about absolutely nothing. Because if you got children, you'll find yourself stressed out over them if you allow yourself to. Y'all with me? So, he goes on to say, that this new birth into the family of God, it comes through faith in Christ. John said, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right, the authority to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. So if you are a believer today in the name of Jesus Christ, then you are now a son of the Most High God. And so you see, y'all ain't clapping. So evidently, being a son of God don't mean anything to you. So let me see if I can walk down your road today. Being a son of God simply means that I'm no longer in control of anything in my life because I'll give it all to the Lord. And being a son of God simply means I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat or what I'm going to drink. That's God's problem now. But me being a son of God is simply said that I'm now under the auspices of God and it's God's responsibility to take care of me and to meet all of my needs and the reason I can say that is because God will never put his name to shame. I wish I could get somebody here to talk with me. So he said, here's the second thing I got to have now. I got to rely on God. And see, before I came to God, I relied on my own strength. I relied on what I thought. I relied on what other people thought. But now that I'm in a relationship with God, I am totally in reliance upon God to meet all of my needs. Is there anybody in here on this morning that that you really depend on God and it's God alone and if it ain't God then I just don't want it. So he said in everything by prayer and supplication through Christ Jesus with that initial relationship that must be a continual reliance upon God and guess what the Bible it reminds you and I that those 
of us who come to God must believe that he is a rewarder to those who seek him. And you got to seek him out. If you want him, you got to seek him. Not that he's lost, but we are the ones who are lost. Never let nobody tell you that uh, God, that you found God. Because you ain't found it. How can you find something that knows where it's at all the time? Come on, y'all talk to me. Y'all like y'all scared this morning. How can you find something when you already know where it's at? Only thing that's lost is me. And the reason that I'm lost is because sin has separated me from my maker. So therefore, I'm lost. But God said, I'm where I am at all the time. All the time, I am what I am. And I who, and I am who I am and why I am. I never get lost. Matter of fact, God said, when I leave here and go over there, I bump into myself, leave me here to get things. So if that's happening, how can you find me when I never get lost? A lot of us, if you're like me, I have to use the navigational system because I don't trust my direction. So I hook mine up every time I get in my car. If I'm going around the corner, it's on. Because I don't trust my direction. But God said, if you rely on me, you can trust me. I'm not going to do anything to hurt you or harm you. You can trust me that wherever I'm taking you to, I'm going to get you to the land. Yes, Lord. So Jesus underscored the same truth when he said, whatever you ask in prayer, believing you will receive it. Now, don't let nobody fool you. You got to pray according to the will of God. See, a lot of us, if I would ask now, have God given you everything you asked for? Some of us will say no. But what you ask for, is it in his will? And see, a lot of us don't know his will because we won't read his word. Everything that God has for me, he placed it in the word. And if I don't have it, it's because I hadn't read the will yet. See, because the will dictates who's going to get what whenever you read the will. We asking for stuff that all the old believers got from the Old Testament. God got some new stuff in the New Testament because we are new believers. All right. Oh, Lord Jesus. All right. Paul says that this is the answer to the problem of anxiety. You got to learn how to trust God. Yeah. And I, re I remember reading it in the, in, 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 as a matter of fact, I just read it this morning in the New Testament. Lord, help me with my unbelief. Yeah. Because every once in a while, I believe, but every now and then, unbelief creeps in. So I'm asking God, help me when I don't want to believe. Help me when circumstances demand that I don't believe. Help me with my unbelief believe. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm the only on one in here. Yeah. That sometimes I believe God, sometimes I don't. Oh, oh, Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord, help me. So, here's point number two. There must be the therapy of a life of peace. There must be a therapy of life of peace. Now, here's the thing. A lot of us don't believe in therapy because of our upbringing. Come on. But let me, let me share this with you. You need somebody personal, Come tangible, Come touchable, on. that you can talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You go through so much oh, within yeah. a 24-hour day period. Yes, yes, Lord. You need somebody mm -hmm. to tell it all to. Yeah. And you need that person that you can trust yeah. that when you tell it, it won't shock them to the point that they stand and look in unbelief. All right. See, because some stuff you tell me, I'm going to look like, what the what? <laughs> but if you got your, a good Christian therapy, yeah. therapist, you can talk to them oh, Lord. about what's ever on your mind. And yeah. I know uh, we, we have a saying, whatever go on in this house, 
is stay in this house. But some of that stuff need to come out of the house. That's, 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 that's why you are in the shape you're in now because you keep in family secrets and they killing you. Because you need somebody to unload to. And yes, you unload to God, but God has gifted and granted other men and women the ability to help regulate your mind. Off of your mind because if you don't, you're gonna burst. Some things you got to you got to unload on your mind. So when we come to know God as our Father through faith in Jesus Christ, you and I experience at once with the with what the Bible calls the peace with God. You know how how peaceful you'll be. When you and God on the same team. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff that's bothering you now. You when you get on the same team with God. Oh, you'll be able to Man. go to sleep. Oh, you, you, you talk, some of y'all tossed and turned all night last yeah. night. Mm -hmm. Because you did or said something that oh, you shouldn't have did or said. Mm -hmm. But when you got peace with God, you can go to sleep. You can see, because uh, according to Romans chapter 1, verse number 5, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, uh -huh. we have peace with God yeah. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, even though I've been justified through faith, I now have peace with God, and it comes through Jesus Christ. And that means the world to me. Even yes. if I don't have what I should have in, in my pockets or in the bank, yes. if I got peace with God, yes. it means more than any money I can present. Yes. Because if I'm at peace with God, yes. God will make everybody around me be at peace with me. Y'all yes. with me? Yes. Even your enemies, when you are at peace with God, God will make your enemies somehow discover I need him in my life. I need her in my life. Why? Because I'm now at peace with God. Because at first, God and I, we was at war. Mm. All right. Yeah. All right. But on. now, we at peace. Thank because you. I had to come to realize that if I was going to get any better in life, God is the only one that who could die. Yeah. So now, I'm at peace with with God through what Christ has done. This was called the peace of reconciliation. All right. God and I have been reconciled. We've been brought back together through Jesus Christ. Yes. But 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 what the apostle is describing in our text is something much more. It is not only the peace with God, but it's the peace of God. Yes. Peace originates, brothers and sisters, yes. with God. Yes. And you do know, if God doesn't declare peace, I don't care what's going on with Palestine and uh, uh, Israel. If God doesn't declare peace, there will be no peace. Amen. No. Until God announces peace upon this earth, we are always going to be at war with somebody uh, about something. Amen. Listen, so he says that um, he said that this peace keeps the heart and the mind. But this word keep is somewhat is somewhat strange and strong at the same time. Because this 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 word keep here, it describes what the army call calls a garrison. It's it's an army of men who have surrounded uh, a person or fort to keep us right. safe. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all ain't with me today. So, so when Paul tells us uh, that the peace of God will guard your heart, he said, "You got an army around you all day long, guarding you, keeping you safe from whatever the enemy tried to do to you, and that's why you hadn't died yet. That's why that car accident didn't kill you. That's why that man." Then kill you. Why? Because I had the peace of God that was guarding me all along. Yes, 
Watch this, watch this. Let me see if I can make it even plainer to you. The peace of God, again, it's going to guard your heart. The, the heart is the cardia, uh, signify the hidden springs of emotional life. Yeah. That, 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 that seat of, in your heart that, that simply says, this is who I, I really am. All right. See, because first impressions make all the difference in the world. All right. But all of us can't continue to fool folk with the first impression. Let me, let me, let me see. Let me, let me, let me, let me come down to middle aisle and just tag in. Remember when you were dating him or her? You put your best foot forward, but you couldn't keep it up. That's why she left. That's why he left. Because what you started, you couldn't finish it. Lord, help me in this house today. Listen, so the writer says that what God starts in you, he will perfect it until the day of redemption. So you ain't got to worry about whether or not God is going to guard me. If he starts out guarding my heart, he's going to end up guarding my heart. And that's where I don't think those crazy thoughts about you any longer because my heart is now gone. That, that's why I ain't cuss you out yesterday when I should have because God, oh, I wish I had somebody in here. God is guarding my heart. Not only does he guard my heart, but God will guard your mouth as well. God will ride on your tongue. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And not only will he pride on my tongue, but later on, by the time we close this thing, God will change the way you think. God will give you a new outlook on life, but you got to allow him to guard your heart. You got to allow him to guard your heart. How many people are emotionally disturbed because of anxiety? Folk can't sleep. They taking pills to get up, pills to go down at night. And still ain't doing them any good. They restless as can be. Because God is not allowing the peace of God to guard their hearts. Again, again, in the most uh, 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 psychological and most, uh, most uh, uh, problems can be traced to the nerves, tensions, uh, and emotional uh, disturbance. And we are there right now with this coming, upcoming election in November. Anxiety is everywhere because on one side of it, you got uh, uh, the white folks saying they want to take back or we, we want to make the country great again. We want to put all black and brown folk out of this country, uh, slave them, or uh, whatever else we need to do. We want to make this country great and white all over again. But then on my side of the spectrum, we say, no way, no how, Jose. We ain't going back. We don't care what you say or what you do. We will fight you tooth and nail before we go back to being a slave again. Amen. Well, y'all, y'all quiet today. But let's go. On. Thank you, mother. Thank you so kindly for your help. So, how many people again face these types of changes in life? Listen, have you not heard of Project Twenty Five and Agenda Forty Five? You do know if. This orange man gets back in the White House. He's going to do everything he can to make it hard for people of color. He's already talking about giving uh, the police department or law enforcement complete immunity from whatever they do to us. And you do know, if you didn't know, I'm going to tell you now. If you did not know, it is open season on the black and brown man. Lord. Yeah, and, and it, when you watch the news, who do you see them stop? Somebody who look like us, somebody with our skin complexion, our little light. It's on us, and then we got the unmitigated gall to talk about we ain't voting for karma. You gonna vote for the black and the, the orange man with the swoop over hat? Do. And you're voting against your own self. Amen. Again, 
If you have not read Project 25, get on Google today. It's 300 and some pages and read what his agenda is. And then come back and tell me you still voting for the orange man. Yeah. And you do know when, when he gets in and if he has his way, he's going to outlaw the educational system. Your child, my children, if they are still in high school, when they get to be a certain grade, they're going to automatically have to register to be drafted. But you love the orange man. And I, I'm, I'm so tired of us telling that lie that he's done more for black folk than any president we've ever had. What did he do? But I digress. Paul said, don't worry about who in the White House. He says, God got you if you have a relationship with him. Hallelujah. And bless his holy name. Then the hymn writer says it this way. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. You got to learn how to talk to God. And if you haven't talked to him yet, depending on what's happening in November, you will talk to him. I guarantee you, before the end of this year, those who did not talk to God before this year ends, you're going to have a relationship with him. One way or the other, you're going to have to talk to the Lord. Let me, let me close this third point. That must be the victory of a life of praise. Come on. See, I, uh, see. Y'all learn how to praise God. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't believe, and I think I'm right, Father. There's not one person in here. You do not have a reason not to praise God. Amen. Well, maybe y'all do, cause y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> if you're honest with yourself. All of us in this room, we have a reason to praise the name of the Lord. If the Lord has been good to you, you got a reason to praise him. If the Lord woke you up this morning, you got a reason to praise him. If he gave you health and life and strength, you got a reason to praise the Lord. If he kept you in your right mind, you got a reason to praise the Lord. If he put food on your table, a roof over your head, an automobile, in your garage, you got a reason to praise the Lord. And y'all still sitting up, sitting up here like God ain't done nothing for you. If the Lord kept your children out late last night, brought them back home safe and sound, you got a reason to praise them. If you hadn't been to the cemetery or the prison, you got a reason to praise the name of the Lord. Oh, bless his holy and righteous now. Lord, I'm just about where you want me to be now. Uh, anxious for nothing, he says. But in everything, you got to learn how to pray. And I like that word, supplication. I like it. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I like it. He said, the supplication is the list you make for the Lord. I wish somebody else in here knew it. He said, go on and make out your list for the Lord. And while you're making it out, make sure every time you write something down, make sure you go through Thanksgiving. You got to learn how to thank God. Even if he had not answered it yet, if you go on and thank it like you already have it, the Lord is bound to give it to you. But then he said, after you made your list up and you thank God for your list, he said, now make your request known to me. God, here I am once again. The old deacon in Old Green was saying, your poor weak handmaid, sir, has body bowed and bent to try to turn some humble thanks. Lord, I thank you now for every good and every perfect gift. Paul said, I'll win you, talk to him. 
He said, make sure you are, that you detail everything you want the Lord to do in your life. Yeah. But he said, not only make your list out, but he said, you ought to thank him in advance. Yes, Lord. But I like what Paul said. He said, when you get through stressing out and you realize that God is handling everything, he says to me in verse number he says finally brothers Paul said I'm getting ready to leave you now but he said when I get here he said whatsoever is true whatever is noble whatever is right and pure and lovely and amiable he said if there's any praise worthy in anything like this he said I want you now to think on these things and I can think on them now because I'm stress free yes long I got all my stress relieved because I have a real relationship with the master and once you get a real relationship with him now your mind is going to shift I don't think like I used to think and I don't do some of the things that I used to do let me join with the old saying I don't go where I used to go because I have a relationship with the Lord well I'm out of here when I tell you that Jesus Christ my elder brother he Job's Hall pawing in a valley he Ezekiel's whim in the middle of a wheel he is Gideon bomb yes he is is there anybody here do you know him ain't he alright and if he's alright and you ain't ashamed nor afraid to wave your hand won't you lean on and tell somebody that he's alright he will not put my soul to shame ain't he alright and if he's alright won't you holler one time alright yes he ain't nobody happy but me the Lord he will do it what will he do Reverend he will put food on your table he'll rock you in the midnight hour he'll hold your hand yeah. ain't he alright can somebody holler at your boy one time say yeah say yeah yeah